Our next talk will be by Alexander about bootstrapping Nix at very, very, very tiny formats. So good luck. I hope you enjoy. OK. Hello, I'm Alex. And in the long COVID fall of the year 2021, I got bored. You know that autumn spleen, when everything's already perfect with your config, and, but you have this itch to change just something in it for the itch of the change, and you end up distro hopping. Uh, yeah, right, you folks don't end up distro hopping, as I've learned from yesterday. It's either goat herding or Nix West for you. Yeah, got it. So, clearly, the answer to that is getting more Linux distributions using Nix. And I decided to build one. I, like, I actually knew how to build packages, but I didn't know how to combine them together to get a Linux distribution. And there wasn't anything like NixOS builds or NixOS from scratch for me to read. So I decided to be the change that I wanted to do it myself. What I wanted to build is like the total opposite of Nix packages. It should have as few packages as possible as few flexibility as possible, just one architecture, no static linking, no, no nothing. The simplest thing possible, which qualifies as a Linux distribution, that decidedly small thing. That project didn't really happen, and I have a good excuse for it, and it's because I embarked on a huge side quest. That's going to be the topic of my today's presentation, Bootstrap from TCC. I had a rough idea that when you're building a distro, you have to start from somewhere. You need a compiler, you need to compile libc, and then probably core utils or gnu make, or should gnu make come first? I wasn't sure about all of that. I looked up how NixOS does that, and the result was fairly disappointing, I would say. It starts with a fixed hash output tarball, 24 max compressed which contains glibc, gcc8, and core utils, and isn't updated in ages. And that's not cool, because that's kind of what I wanted to arrive at, not to start from. And I thought, it sure can be better. I googled it up, and yes, sure, it can be better. There's this project called Stage Zero, lives at bootstrappable.org, and this is what the geeks bootstrap is using. And this thing is, frankly, awesome. These madmen over there, they start from a binary seed of less than half of a kilobyte. This is like, uh, yeah, they call it a full source bootstrap, and I tend to agree with that statement, really. They, uh, like, they start with what barely qualifies as a binary editor, and then work their way forward towards something like a C compiler, but it definitely isn't C, then better and better C compilers. And then at this point, they can build a scheme interpreter, which runs a compiler, which is just good enough to compile tiny CC, which is known to compile old versions of GCC. This is awesome. If you dig this kind of stuff, definitely check the, uh, what they're doing. I didn't want this. <laughs> I wanted something simple for my toy distro. I wanted just a toy bootstrap. And I thought, ah, yeah. And also back then, it was way lispier, I think. And it, start, it wasn't really complete back then. It was like, when we get from hex 0 to mess, then we can compile tiny CC and then it's all downhill from there. So I thought, I'm going to take it easy. I'm going to start right here. There's almost nothing to be done here. And that's my entry point, TinyCC. TinyCC is another one of Fabrice Bellard's creations gracing your sinful earth. It's a small C compiler. It doesn't optimize anything, basically, but it's small. It's just 400 kilobytes when built from Nix packages. Another cool thing that I knew about it, it has a dash run option. So you can do TCC dash run hello C with this contents and you get your greeting. And I thought, cool, I'm going to start with it, with a bit of C, and compile everything that I want. Unfortunately, it turns out that if you start with the truth, where the only binary is TinyCC, you don't really have STDIO, you don't have printf, you don't even have main. 
So the approach has to be adjusted a bit. I need to start with no std ink, no std lib. I need to learn how to issue system calls to, in order to actually do something. And then, if I define the familiar C functions that I'm used to, I can finally output some greeting. Also, I haven't defined strlen on my slides. And I had to define strlen, strcpy, strcmp, implement memset. I consider this a karmic boomerang from the times when I made my students do that for no particular reason. <laughs> Look who's laughing now. With that, arsenal and some syscalls. I decided I'm ready, we can get started. Here's the truth, here's this tiny CC binary. I've unpacked some sources there. I want to compile a libc and a shell. This didn't go smoothly at all. First of all, because to compile muscle or busybox, you use configure make, make install. I don't have make, I don't have shell. None of that works for me. So yeah, it was ugly. You can look it up on GitHub in its full glory. This is the cutest part maybe, and it's already ugly. You can see that it depends a lot on the internals of busybox. But it turned out to be a viable approach. I also needed to compile some runtime library libtcc1, but for brevity I'm gonna omit that. So with the initial tcc, I bit parts of muscle because I just issue the tcc invocations directly. I don't want to do all of them, just the power to that I actually need. With that problem muscle, I compile a TCC, with that one I compile the final stable one independent from the initial one. Then I compile protomuscle again, TCC again, just to double check that the previous one was actually stable. And I compile parts of BusyBox and I finally have a shell. And this is what, this was a super relieving thing. I could actually write, <laughs> I could actually build make next in shell with all the familiar things you have, like unpacking, configure, make, make install. And I was super pleased several days later when this thing actually also worked, because initially my tar didn't work, my shell didn't work good enough. I had to go back and compile more of BusyBox and more of Muscle, but I persisted, and this thing finally worked. From there, I went on to what I call compiler ascension. I want better compilers, so I built GNUMake, binutils, GCC4, Muscle, with actual build tools and not some random things. <laughs> then I built a GCC4 which can compile C++ code. From there I could get GCC10, and finally the latest and greatest Clang, with which I proceeded to rebuild all the basic stuff that I will need later. And this is more or less how it looked like by this point. Phew. So I went from tiny CC to a modern tool chain, but I wanted Nix. So let's go Nix. Yeah, and at this point it was already like, you see it's just the same shell build files, but now tar is the actual tar configure works and everything, so it's much easier from there. I built a bunch of Nix dependencies, and I built Nix itself. At this point, writing those shell scripts was the easy part, twice as hard was to make them output reproducible things. Ooh. Whoever is concerned with reproducibility in Nix packages and fixing it, mad respect to all of you. I learned that this is super hard, this is a constant struggle, just some highlights. I got a mismatch in stage one, which is a bit insulting because stage one is that ugly C part when I manually invoke TCC, how can I get a mismatch in there? Turns out, on different hosts, I had different file systems. File system ordering isn't, isn't guaranteed. Lesson learned, add this order FS to the build system. I get mismatch in libraries because some linker thought it's going to be better if, if we are fast, but not reproducible. I get a race condition if you have enough cores, LLVM just doesn't compile. That's because, yeah, because of a missing dependency in CMake, it's actually easy to fix when you know all these ugly things. At some point, <laughs> one cursed morning, I got a mismatch which I traced back to packing a single empty file into a tarball and getting two different hashes. And this one was because of a tar 4.15 update when they just broke the format for whatever reason, even if you follow all the guidance from the documentation about creating reproducible tarballs. 
all I can all I can say about it. Don't be like tar maintainers. <laughs> And also happy things like a mismatch in Perl because New Year is around and you're gonna get different hashes New Year. The eagle eye of you can say, wait, there was no Perl in the previous slides. Yes, that's because I've cheated. I've cheated actually in each and every transition over there. It would be hard to find w the one where I haven't cheated. But the biggest one is I'm not building Nix proper, I'm building my fork of it. And the biggest change in there is that, that it doesn't depend on OpenSSL, so I don't can skip dealing with Perl shenanigans. Okay, sorry for that. Fine. Now when I have Nix, it's time to restart again, but this time build the same things with Nix. So I take the mathematician's answer, I already have this stage one in C. I pull in the tiny CC binary, I repeat all the steps, and now I have a modern muscle C link toolchain, but built with Nix. And that's the most of the scope of the bootstrap from TinyCC project over here. To reiterate, it's a toy bootstrap. It's for a toy distro. If you want to start a real distro, definitely go to the stage zero thing. For the astronomer gigs out here, this NixOS bootstrap to my bootstrap is like Earth to moon mass. But theirs is three orders of magnitude smaller than that. So that's like some anonymous asteroids over there, which isn't even deserving to be named. I wouldn't call my bootstrap a trusted bootstrap because you have to trust a tiny CC binary. Almost five gigabytes of sources involved in the previous steps. And the running kernel because I'm issuing syscalls. And if you're interested in how this is solved, also please go to the stage zero project. I'm not dealing with that. But that's one big binary to trust, you know. There are three ways to build the code from this repository. One is to execute stage one with tinycc, and it will chain load into the latter stages. This is the no dependencies way of doing that, but it's also super slow. And if it fails somewhere, you have to restart from scratch. So there's also some make build system, some scaffolding over it, which saves intermediate results, uh, checks the hashes, employs uh, C cache, applies disorder fast, this kind of stuff. So for the maintenance of it, definitely use that one. And finally, this is also a flake, which has no input flakes, but it like pulls in tiny CC, some sources, and gives you a functioning toolchain. To prove that it's functioning, I've started this next flake called Ziltrace Core. There I implemented call package and override patterns using next pills. And starting from the toolchain I had in the previous part, built with Nix. I'm building a ton of other stuff, out of which notable ones are Busybox, Nix, Linux, and Limine, which is the bootloader of choice of, for me. Yeah, and all of that culminates in a bootable ISO file. So, you can get to that point and not show a demo. You can just do qemu-cd-rom this ISO file, like this. The QMO will start, there's a bootloader, kernels booting, networks is being set up. Yeah, and you get a shell with my distro. If somebody... In order to make the letters larger, I will also use the serial point, give it more RAM. But yeah, it, look, it will look pretty much the same, just, you know, more comfortable without that extra window. I did my first release in the February of 2022, and for several reasons I promptly lost all the drive to work on this project. One of them being my project's logo at the time becoming appropriated as a Nazi symbol. But then when this talk was accepted for NixCon, I got second wind, and I've updated all the versions that I've used there, and also just yesterday night I taught it one interesting trick but now inside it you have a network and you can do nix, build, github, zilchoes, core. And it's going to be downloading stuff and then it's going to be building stuff for approximately one eternity because in that invocation I gave it one CPU core and you know compiling all that stuff all over again takes a ton of time. But I'm going to time skip and basically it will arrive at the same ISO file, same 40MX ISO file, 
that I've originally started. So now my distribution is also self-hosting. Okay, out of just, except those two code, uh, code repositories and the ISO file I got in the end, there were some non-technical <laughs> non and unexpected outcomes of this project. One was I learned a ton, things that I wanted to know, things that I didn't want to know, more of the second variety of it. And if I were to send myself back a message in time, to do something differently, I wouldn't say don't use content address derivations. The idea is awesome, but you can't easily export the derivation realization mappings. And in order to pass around my <laughs> Nix store between stages, I actually have to butcher the SQLite database until it's reproducible, and then I can pass it around. Uh, yeah, again, again, I just wouldn't use that. Also, Hydra patch set was a pain to maintain. I run a Hydra which can can do CA derivations and whoa. Another interesting outcome is Emily Trau has told me that this was an inspiration for a different project, going from stage zero POSIX up to TCC where I started. And this thing is actually packaged now in Nix packages under minimal bootstrap. As far as I can see, it's not wired to anything. So if you want to take this superior bootstrap and for example, bootstrap Nix OS proper with it, please join the minimal bootstrap team. I'm sure they can use your help. Finally, when you embark on a project of that size, there are incidental patches here and there. Some of them were even accepted. It took me seven days before I patched the original compiler I started with because it just wasn't linking the way I was expected it to link. There was some patch for the make that I ended up not using, the aforementioned LLVM build dependency race condition thing. Also a couple of patches to Nix. Two of them were accepted, but the coolest one, dropping OpenSSL, wasn't. Guess what? OpenSSL computes SHA-2 twice as fast as Libsodium, the other crypto dependency Nix has. And it's just because of the performance SHA-2, we pull in the entire OpenSSL circus. Somebody please do something about it. Yeah, some overarching conclusions out of it. Now I know where little distros come from. For um, anybody interested, it's boredom, obviously. Bootstrapping is interesting even if you take the decidedly easy bootstrapping path. Reproducibility is hard. I can't stress that enough. And XOS is now moving towards a better bootstrap, even though it's not entirely there. Finally, some non-technical ones as well. One doesn't have to do state-of-art stuff to have fun. Sometimes you can take the easy road and curse all the way through it anyway. Another interesting thing, from the very beginning, from getting to print Hello World to getting to the ISO to boot, it was constantly just beyond my abilities to do the next step. So I got a constant stream of motivation throughout the initial phase of the project. I wish all projects were like that. Side quests are sometimes more rewarding than main ones. I didn't get to work on the actual distro I wanted, but that was probably more fun than that. And another one, which I've learned only when I opened the NixCon schedule, and noticed that the next talk is gonna be about Zilch, the package manager, and my operating system is called ZilchOS and they have no relationship altogether. So don't sit on your projects for two years, both me and the next speaker, announce them, <laughs> publish blog posts, I don't know, do something. <laughs> Make them public by not just pushing them to GitHub, but making them more visible. And that's it. Questions? Any questions? A lot of fun. Uh, how much, uh, how big is the ISO in the end that you create? 14 megabytes. Okay, thanks. 
what use cases did you experience uh, content address derivations to actually work for, if any? Could you please repeat the question? I didn't really catch all of that. What use cases did you experience content address derivations, content addressing stores, to actually work for, if any? Well, to be absolutely honest, I thought that if I'm going to do it that way, I can skip building SHA-256 sum and do, make Nix do the hashing for me. The amount of suffering I got in return was not proportionate, I would say. Uh, and also, it's the next cool thing, so why not use it in an ex experimental distro? You, you said that uh, the Nix OS bootstrap was getting better. Could you talk a little bit more about how that is getting better? Well, instead of starting from this 24 meg tarball with all the stuff already pre-built and statically linked, Emily is using stage zero POSIX bootstrap chain, which does depend on the kernel, which I think is natural because like all the Nix building we are doing is happening on the same kernel. You don't have the luxury to start from some bare metal bootstrap and make it make it happen as the initial thing happening to Nix packages. So that's the next big thing. And then they are following this chain similar to what I was showing previously, building larger and larger assembly Program, programs, better and better C compilers, and ending up with working compilers. Uh, you said that Nix was pulling in all of OpenSSL for basically one operation. Yes. Is there any good alternatives out there now that are competitive in performance, or is that your next side project? Yeah, it's a bit shameful that I work in a crypto team, but I don't know right off the bat. I can say that SHA-2 is implemented absolutely everywhere, including Sodium, so that's what I was using for my toy bootstrap. But, yeah, I guess the right way is to make it faster inside Lip Sodium and then use that. Uh, do you have any suggestions for tooling that would be helpful for dealing with CA mismatches? Um, and as this will potentially be used more in the future. Could you repeat that again? Do you have any suggestions for like tooling that could be built to make uh, dealing with CA mismatches an easier time? Dealing, yes, easier, no. <laughs> Definitely use the defoscope of the Debian reproducible builds efforts. That's the wonderful thing that recursively unca unpacks pretty much any binary you throw at it. When you don't know why the outputs differ, it's definitely useful to save a build tree as an extra output and compare the build trees, and now you can trace it back to the origin of the mismatch. Other than that, yeah, gain experience, pull out hair, curse, that's all the coping strategies I have. Uh, hi, uh, last time uh, when the uh, GCC upgrade from uh, what I remember from 9 to 12 was performed in Linux packages on ARCC for Linux, uh, there was a PR that was rejected because it takes another uh, stage to build the GCC again. Sorry, uh, once again, why was it rejected? Uh, because it adds an additional stage for building GCC again and also, also glibc. And the final uh, resolution is to upgrade the bootstrap files, actually. So uh, I don't know how, uh, what, uh, how long the additional time will take if Nix packages finally uh, was migrated to the minimal bootstrap for the bootstrap of a standard environment. You mean the bootstrap that I've demoed? Mm. I don't know. On the top of the line workstation, you can build all of that overnight, I think, so the results won't be pleasing, I would say. Maybe we, that can be modularized into a flake, and then the output, outputs will be cached, and then that won't be a concern at all, but that would entail some modularization of next packages. Okay, let's hear it one more time, please. <laughs> 